Okay. Okay, nice to see everyone, familiar faces and uh yeah. Big smiles, it's so uh well kind of surreal to be somewhere across entirely across the world and all of a sudden you're zoomed into zoomed into another time zone, another group of people, another group of friends that are that are friends, but when did they turn up? Yes, so it's kind of surreal. I'm here in, I, I, I don't know if you know, I was in the UK with Venerable Chanda for several months. And so um, I do know several, I do know many of you now, but now I'm in uh, the Southern Highlands in New South Wales, in a beautiful forest that is, you wouldn't, that is bordering a 10,000 acre national park. It, my, my, my little kuti is at the edge of a sandstone cliff, literally feels like, you know, if you blow too hard, it'll fall over the edge. And uh, there's uh, waterfalls below me and for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers out onto the ocean, there's absolutely nothing I see except the forest. It is, it is, it is quite, quite amazing to be so close to nature and so close to well toppling off the edge of a cliff <laughs> but um yeah it's a uh, uh, it's a amazing to live um well with animals and and snakes and our lawnmower is a wombat a cute fat wombat turns up almost every evening doesn't care if anybody's there or not and keeps the lawn very evenly cut anyway these are the these are the, the joys of living in a forest monastery um yeah so uh it's halfway through the vasa here in uh, as as you know our, our vasa is a uh, is uh, three months long and well, we're halfway through it. And uh, well, as you practice, you realize, you realize how, how deep our sense of self is and how much we are entrenched in this world and we take it to be so real and we take ourselves to be so real. And as a result, we suffer like anything. So at least we know, <laughs> at least we know that uh, this world is not as uh, solid and as sensible as we, as we would like it to be. Anyway, one of my little reflections. So today we are, um, when Bachan has suggested, we do a loving kindness meditation for a little bit longer because uh, we all need a bit of love in our life because, you know, it's hard being a human being. We get tossed around by fame and defame, by happiness and sorrow, by pleasure and pain, by people blaming us and people praising us. So with all of that, we need a little bit of kindness and a little bit of ah, forgiveness and care for ourselves. So we have a except we'll have like a forty five minute uh, session of of uh, meditation today, and and then perhaps we'll see what happens if we can um, have a question and answer session. Now, anyway, we'll see how it goes. But most of all, it's time to relax, and it's time to let go of the world. Leave it outside the door, close the door, 
and enjoy having nothing to do for the next 45 minutes. So, making sure you're comfortable, making sure that, well, to as much degree as possible, you Close the door to the world. Taking a deep breath in and out. And another one. And another one. Letting go of all that we hold on. Tension in our body that we're not even aware of. And allowing your mind to settle into your body. Drawing it in. Noticing what's going on. What's going on in your body? Allowing yourself to feel, to listen, hear yourself, hear your body. Giving yourself some time with no agenda.
keeping your mind within your body. Just a sense of being here. And so today we're going to practice some metta meditation. What now, when sometimes we get the wrong end of the stick and metta meditation becomes a bit of a burden. We think we, think we have to somehow, you know, superimpose happy thoughts on top of our bad mood or any negativity that we may feel. And so we, we, we think we can, well, sometimes it works. We can uh, sort of put icing on a, on, a, on, a, on a pile of mud and it'll turn out all right. What metta meditation is, for me, I find it's when the junk is out of the way, not the junk, but the stuff of our minds that, that um, hurt us and hinder us. When it's out of the way, what's left behind is peace, ease, and kindness and softness. So we try to clear away the debris of our minds. And then what is left behind is peace and ease. So it's not something we do. It's not something we 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 um, sort of have. Uh, force ourselves into, but we relax ourselves into metta. We allow metta to un, we clear the, we clear the window and we see that metta was there all along. Sometimes we, we, the metta practices, we just gently remind ourselves or nudge our minds to remember 
what it means to care. Because deep down inside, we actually know, we actually know what purity is. We allow it to happen. So today we'll nudge our, our minds towards having a bit of care towards ourselves. Because when we are whole and when we are at ease, then naturally we bring peace to others, a sense of ease to others. So, we think of ourselves and we hear ourselves, hear our bodies, and we say, I hope. You are okay. May you be well. May I be well. I find peace in myself. May I allow myself to be accepting all my idiosyncrasies, all the things that I do right or wrong, I hear myself trying so hard and I say it's okay. It's okay to just be. However, whatever words that come in your into your mind, whatever it is that that are your tricks to bring that sense of softness of acceptance.
of yourself for yourself into your mind. May I be at ease. May I be at peace. Be free from harm and pain. Like I said, we're not superimposing some good feelings and wiping out the negativity, but we're just reminding ourselves of our, of our innate goodness. But sometimes things come up obviously, memories, what went on in the day, emotions, pains in the body. When these things come up, we don't, well, if we, if they disappear, that's okay. But if they still keep coming up, then we look at them. Look at them again, listening. What is it that's bugging me? Listening to ourselves. And his mind wanders away. 
bringing it back again to that sense of softness of acceptance of being sometimes vulnerable allowing ourselves to be vulnerable not always together not always knowing the right thing to do Minding myself, bringing our minds back. May I be well. Perhaps we we'll go through our bodies starting with our feet. Getting to know ourselves, parts of our body that mostly we take for granted. Starting with our feet, we say, I hope you are well feet. How are you doing? I'm paying, I want to know how you are. What's going on for you? I hope you're well. Your legs, your legs that take us around wherever we want to go. Always there for us. That we take for granted. 
see your legs. May you be well. Thank you for all that you do every day. And then move to our abdomen area, all the organs that constantly work, never a day's rest, again that we take for granted. Our stomachs, our intestines, and we say, thank you, body. Thank you for all that you do. How are you doing? Are you well? I'm sorry I've ignored you for so long, but I want to know how you are. In our chests. Again, all the organs, the lungs, the liver, the heart. So many organs working constantly, keeping us alive, helping us without asking for anything. We pay attention and give thanks. Give thanks to our body. May you be well. I hope you are all right. Let me know if you need anything. I am doing for you. And we 
our spine and especially our backs, backs that sit on chairs most of the time. Crunched up. We give it space. We allow it to sit tall. Release. And be free. Thank you, Paul. And our arms right down to our fingertips. Our hands that are always there at our bidding, helping us pick things up, feed us, clean us. Thank you, hands. Thank you, fingers. How are you doing? Let me know if you need anything. I just want to let you know that I'm there for you. And then up to our heads. All our sense organs, our eyes, again, working ceaselessly to keep us safe. Let us know what's going on. Thank you, eyes. May you rest and relax. Have a good week. Our nose, breathing all the time, keeping us alive. Again, working ceaselessly. And your nose, and your air that we breathe, we want to know how you are, 
Yeah, he is again taken for granted. Hello, he is. Hope you are well. Thank you for not aching. Probably not anyway. Such a detailed apparatus. So many fine bones working carefully. Keeping us in balance. Keeping us safe. How are you doing here? In our mouths, mouths that process food all the time, our teeth and our tongue. Helping us breathe at times. Helping us speak and express ourselves and our needs. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Lips. I hope you are well. Let me know if you need anything. And find me a little brains processing all that information, taking away, keeping us alive. May you relax. May you have a break. Maybe at ease.
Let me know if you need anything. But I just want you to know that I care for you. Being with our whole bodies, from head to toe, Not asking for anything. Not demanding anything. Allowing us to be ourselves. All the aches and pains and insecurities and difficulties of being a human being. Allowing ourselves to just be ourselves. Bring our mind back if it wanders away. The whole sense of just being here. Listening. Hearing ourselves. Are trying to be anything just being us. Metta meditation. Meditation is getting to know ourselves. Getting to know our bodies because our bodies often reflect our emotions and all the thoughts that are kind of stuck in different places. Tensions, tightness. The reflection of what is going on in our minds. So we learn to listen. And in the listening, we learn to care. We understand 
that we have such little control over the world, over our own selves, leave alone the world. We learn to be at ease with the pain and the joy. Not holding on to either of them. A gentle mother. Watching the ups and downs of our life. holding our hand We learn to let go. We learn to accept. And just we come towards the end of the meditation. We think just as we want ourselves to be at ease, just as we wish ourselves well to be at ease in the world. So may others, all beings, may they too be at ease in themselves, caring for themselves, forgiving themselves. Knowing that they have such little control over what goes on, what happens to them. May all beings just like me, may we all care for ourselves, may we all be at ease in ourselves, find peace in ourselves.
We especially want to think of anyone who is having a bit of difficulty in their life. Someone we care for. We wish that they too find this inner peace. By the power of our practice, of our of our of our well beingness. May those around us, those who may contact us, who contact us, our family, our friends, those who we work with, may they too experience the same ease and peace. May we be at ease in the world. Free from harm and danger. Free from Anxiety, free from anger, may they too find peace in their life. Coming back to this room, coming back to our reality, so-called reality. Just reflecting for a few minutes what happened in the last hour, or for, for, and 45 minutes. How we are, what happened during the practice, anything that stood out, anything that uh, was helpful, what went on? Were you completely lost? Did you have a good sleep? Just so that we know what, what went on, what worked, what didn't work. And when you're ready, and slowly open your eyes. Oh, so I hope everyone is feeling a little better, a little more relaxed, a little more <laughs> at ease. And uh, yeah, 
So I, I just wanted to say a little bit about what metta meditation is. And um, I'm not sure we have a, another half an hour. Perhaps we'll have a bit of a discussion or, um, yeah, see how it goes. Uh, so just to just I'm, I'm sure you've heard all of this but metta meditation is it's really you know we think it's about others but metta meditation it's really for ourselves isn't it because um it doesn't matter what other people do right or wrong what they you know whether they're Sane or not sane. When you live in community, you get all kind you get all kinds of opinions. I'm sure it's in families as well as at work, but anyway, people, people, people. <laughs> but in the end, metta meditation is it's for yourself because you are at ease in the world. And it's also, you know, and when you are at ease, you bring wellness and and, and well-being, you just kind of exude it to those around you, hopefully. And so metta is, 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 is how we relate to the world. The Buddha talked of the four, four Brahma Viharas, metta, which is loving kindness, karuna, which is um, compassion, mudita, which is... Um, um, sympathetic joy and upekha, which is equanimity. So all those four are ways that we relate to us, to the world and to ourselves. And, uh, you know, most of the time we think that we were kind of trained to judge and to, to, to um, I don't know, to be so critical and to be so fault finding of of ourselves and the world, and it somehow we see we, we think that by finding fault and fixing all the problems that all the problems all the problems will be once and for all be done with, all cleared, and we'll live happily ever after. It doesn't seem to have happened all this time. I don't know for you, but it doesn't seem to have happened for me. So these four Brahma Viharas are the ways that we actually do relate to the world because it never quite seems to work quite right. Um, um, uh, a teacher once pointed out to us, it pointed out to me anyway, that um, we, we often focus on just the Brahma Vihara. We often just focus on, on uh, metta. We just focus on having uh, a loving kindness and you know kindness to ourselves but actually there are four there are four brahma viharas and all of them have a different nuance they have a different um time and place so what we were practicing just now is metta but sometimes what we need is is um equanimity you know Um, sometimes we try so hard and things don't work out or people just do do the wrong thing and we can't stop them and um, we have to learn that we have little control over others you know they are their they are their own they are their own people and so we learn to be equanimous with, with um, other people and their minds. So sometimes it's not about being kind and forgiving. Sometimes we just have to, we just have to, just have to accept. People do the wrong thing, <laughs> and or the right thing. They're just driven by their 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 um their backgrounds and their understanding and we just just accept and be you know can't do anything about it so sometimes what we need to practice is equanimity 
I'm not sure how how you practice equanimity, but I kind of go like, well, well, I kind of go like, well, you know, I can't fix their minds. <laughs> I can't make them think the way I want them to. You know, I can't make myself think the way I want to. So what can I do? You know, let people are as they are. So. Um, sometimes what we need is equanimity. And sometimes what we need is compassion. You, sometimes um, it's not wishing somebody well, but we see that they are suffering. And we hold them, you, you, you kind of go like, I know what, you know, I wish, I hope you are well. I really hope that you are eased from this pain and and um, find some find some peace. The difference between um, uh, metta and uh, karuna, between um, well, loving kindness and compassion, is that with compassion we see the suffering in others. We see the we see the difficulties that they are going through, but we don't drown this is a mistake that i always said we don't drown with them we don't drown in their suffering with them but we we lift them up we wish them well we see in our minds that they are they that they can be healed we we hold them close to our hearts and we send our good wishes to them so compassion is healing the, the suffering of others through our own goodness, through our own wishes. And then the last of those is um, uh, uh, mudita, which is sympathetic joy. And that is a lovely one. It's to rejoice in others' well-being in others happiness when when and and sometimes you know sometimes um uh, we think we have to rejoice in 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 what seems like kind of superficial you know someone bought a new nice pair of shoes i mean yeah it's nice it's nice that you have a nice pair of shoes i don't know i'm not i'm not out there in the world but ultimately for me anyway um having sympathetic joy is seeing people's spiritual qualities grow when you see them becoming better human beings when you see them um you know their their lives improve through goodness, that's when your heart rejoices, when you see them become more um, um, uh, more humble, um, more forgiving, more, um, uh, how, do you, how do you say, more soft in their hearts. Your something in you also wakes up and go, oh, it's so good, I'm happy for you. I'm happy you're walking the right path. I'm happy you're going towards true happiness, not some happiness that will come and go, yes, you've got a great new house, I'm happy for you, or you know, whatever it is, got a good new job, it's great. But ultimately, when you see people's goodness grow, you really rejoice. So... Um, I just wanted to mention those four because like I said, often we just four, we think that we have to be, you know, we just have to practice metta or be kind. But sometimes what we need is just stepping back and and accepting that people do their own things, you know, we have we can't manage their minds for them. So we have equanimity. And sometimes what we need is compassion where we we hold people close to our hearts and we give them a big hug and wipe away their tears and bring our goodness into their lives.
And sometimes what we need is mudita, being happy for other people, like all of us here, mudita, that we're genuinely wanting to improve our minds and our hearts and be better human beings. So it's, it's always uh, those spiritual qualities that are of the highest value that when we recognize in other people, our heart lifts and we, we, we sing with them that their minds are, their, their lives are getting better. Um, yeah, well, we have uh, 15 minutes left or so. And initially, I was not very sure how this would go. Uh, but perhaps we'll just um, end with some uh, just some thoughts that you might have on metta meditation. Perhaps you could share with everybody else in the in the group um, what helps you to practice metta meditation. You know how do you practice metta meditation, or, or well, what what gets in the way of your practicing metta meditation? You know. Um, perhaps you would like to share with us what are what are your tricks? <laughs> what has helped you? Oh, right, Richard. Yes, hi. Um, nice to meet you again, Bob. Um. So myself, I've got a friend of mine, you know, um, this lady, she's sort of, um, you know, forever ending up in a mental hospital, you know, and mm. she always has um, the same problem again and again and again, you know. Well, she can't help it, you know, because she has depression. But she's, yeah. you know, but, um, but at the same time, she can help it. You know, she's sort of deliberately sort of like puts herself back in the mental hospital. You know, it's almost as if she you know it's almost as, as if she knows what she's doing and you know and she just sort of blows up and it mm. affects everybody in her family and all her friends. So she's lost mm. practically all her friends except for myself and her oh. and her mother. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm literally one of her very few friends. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, I'll actually go to visit her in the hospital again and again and again when she's in the hospital. And when she gets out of the hospital, you know, I help her with money, not obviously very much, you know. Mm -hmm. I get her cigarettes, obviously within limit, because I'm not a doormat, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a certain age. So I know how to, you know, to restrain her in, in a way because I'm her friend, you know. And so I find it's very good practice to practice some compassion and mm -hmm. a loving kindness towards mm -hmm. this lady who is my friend. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, she sometimes is practically not insane, but she's, well, that sounds a bit rude, but she's very unhuman. In her attitude, she's literally like a demon. The way that mm. she presents herself, she can't help it. It's just mm -hmm. her nature. She just goes nuts, you know. And then she, uh, because it's the medication she's on, you know, mm. and it's her whole nature. She just completely flips out. Mm -hmm. And she's a very, she's a very big lady. And mm. um, so, you know, I'm one of the very few friends who actually. We go to visit her. I visit mm -hmm. her, um, you know, as a family friend. Mm -hmm. And so I do this because it's actually out of compassion for her and out of loving mm -hmm. kindness to her. And mm -hmm. again, not as a doormat. So she, she mm -hmm. knows she can't walk all over me and abuse my friendship. Right. But it's right. a very good practice, I found, you know, mm -hmm. to use my own intelligence within mm -hmm. limits. She right. knows the limits, and I know the limits. Mm. But it's very good practice to develop compassion and mm. loving kindness because, you know, that's part of the Dharma is actually to actually forgive, as Ajahn Brahm says, you know, you always forgive. 
you know, in someone, you know, that's the whole point, you know. You, you do actually try to forgive your friends because they do actually have a part of them which is good. So mm -hmm. you try to cultivate that. So um, that's what I'm trying to do with this friend of mine. I try to do it skillfully. Mm -hmm. And um, so she's always very happy to see me mm -hmm. when I go to visit her. When she calms down with her medication, mm -hmm. she calms down again. But she's very blind, in you know, she's very blind. She's in this cycle. She's been doing it for, for about 10 years now. She just doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. She just goes in cycles and, you know, she can't really um, get out of the cycle. She's so right. conditioned now. Right. So being her friend, from, from my own practice, it's very good to... For me to develop compassion with mm. wisdom and also mm. loving kindness as well. Right, and right. Um, I find it very helpful. And she finds it helpful as well. So it's a two way mm. street. So right. um, I find it a very good way to practice that way Wonderful. as well. So it's yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. There's a lot, a lot in there. Yeah, because sometimes we get sucked into other people's difficulties and don't know our uh, boundaries, so per se. But with compassion, you you know you're not going to be a doormat. But at the same time, you're her friend. So that's really that's really that's true compassion. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Oh, Manori. Um, thank you, Venerable. It was a very lovely meditation session. And I'll quickly tell, uh, what I wanted to tell is some questions that uh, came up in the um, in the Karaniya Metta Sutta chanting session. Uh, mm -hmm. So before the chanting, we we tell dedications. So most of the dedications are if someone is sick and, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of um, mm. talks about, you know, people who need compassion. And uh, so some people are feeling a bit down when, you know, listening to continuous, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, sad things about other people. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, can you give maybe, you know, t let us know, like, how do you use, you, t you touched that, you said that compassion, we shouldn't be, getting down we have to lift them up as well so can you mm. just quickly um let us know how not to get depressed when you right. listen to a lot of things like that right 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 well first of all you have to know that that is that's not compassion compassion isn't isn't getting drowned with them to to in the beginning you do you do need to empathize you do need to uh, feel their pain but as Ajahn Brahm says you go down the you go down the you 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 go down with them but you have a ladder for both of you to climb out again so you go down to the bottom but you have a ladder you both know how to, you can climb out with them so this is actually, this is something I've suffered from a lot, being a sort of very empathetic person. I thought caring for others was feeling their pain and feeling, feeling equally miserable. So first of all, you have to know that that is not compassion. Compassion is actually extremely positive quality. It's a, it's a very bright mind and it's a very joy, you know, it's a very whole mind like what Richard said you know you 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 know your boundaries so first of all you have to understand what compassion is and um uh so when you see your mind going down that direction of hearing people's people's perhaps it's your job good lord um difficulty after difficulty after difficulty um there's there's a friend of mine who's um a, a counselor and she said often they they have peers that they talk about things with. So if you're finding yourself, you know, getting down with hearing bad news, talk about it with somebody. You know, talk about it with another friend. I I I, I my head is full of 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 stuffs. You know, find a friend and just 
express your difficulties, just unburden yourself, just talk it out. Um, it's so that you, it's not kind of going around and around in your head. And, uh, and, and, and you have to, I mean, another tip that this friend meant was that the friend who's a counselor said was that, uh, as a counselor, you have to learn to close the door of your job, close the door when you leave work. You kind of go, okay, I have left other people's problems in the office, close the door because she does a suicide line. She, she's, she has on the suicide line and, and have something to switch off, switch off that side that is continuously churning over other people's problems saying, okay, I have finished my job for the day. I have left all those problems behind. Now I'm going on to my family or whatever it is. So you don't have to carry everything, you know, everybody else with you wherever you go 24 seven, you leave it aside. So somehow you have to learn to tell your brain, you, you know, that's, that's their business. Equanimous finished for the day. So those are two tricks that I've kind of used for, for myself, learning to tell myself, no, not my business, finished for the day. I don't have to carry everybody's suffering with me wherever I go. Um, yeah, and just talking it out. Talk to a friend. You know, this is bothering me. This one said this to that one, and it's bothering me. I just need to talk about it. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's just a couple of things in the chat. Um, Rachel Uber, oh, Rachel says, I benefit immensely from method practice. So I find it quite difficult to practice on my own and benefit most from the group practice. Thank you. Yeah, and then Joel says, lovely to hear how you take care of your friend, Richard. Think if everybody that has use of, that has use of mental health care has a friend like you that, Come and visit them at the hospital. Um, oh, from Joel, who's working in the psychiatric hospital. Oh, my goodness. Right. Wow, you have a... Wow, quite a job. Yeah. Thank you. So we have... Um, we've kind of come to the end of our session. And if uh, anyone else has... It has anything to share if not we have we've got to wrap up oh. <laughs> uh, yeah okay so, so we yes go ahead man there's no questions uh, yes. Yes. uh well thank you very much venerable Upeka for coming yeah. to give us this lovely talk and the meditation. Um, yeah. Venerable Lupeka, as you know, has, you know, was with us for some time and uh, uh, did a lovely meditation program at Cambridge. It is in Anukampa Bikuni website. And today's program is offered on a donation basis in the spirit of generosity. With your generosity, Anukampa Bikuni project and the Venerable Chanda, can provide the community and wide world with valuable Dhamma talks, teachings, and meditation retreats. Anukampa exits solely from your kind generosity. And we gain good karma by enabling the others, uh, enabling these teachers to happen. Um, and if you want to donate, uh, it is anukampaproject.org forward slash donate. And I will add the link. Uh, into the chat box. Thank you very much, Venerable, again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your practice. And uh, have a good week. <laughs>